I'm going to hand over to Robin Orfatelli, who um, is from Sheffield, is on the NEC and is one of our national negotiators. When you're ready, Robin. Thanks for having me. Um, so I'm going to try to give you a very brief whistle stop tour of two things. The first one is, what is it that we're actually asking for in the four fights? What are our demands? And then the second thing is, why do these demands fundamentally matter so much? So the first thing that we're asking for is an increase to the pay envelope. We want to be paid more. Um, and the reason that this is so important is, I mean, there's so many reasons why it's so important. The first one is, is as Joss just said, um, what's been happening to us is that year on year, we're getting real terms pay cuts. And this doesn't just impact our bottom line as individuals it, at, in a given year, it impacts our retirement because the amount of pay that we're getting will directly impact what's going into our pension. Um, so even independently of USS proposing cuts, getting paid less year on year impacts your security and retirement. Secondly, getting paid less doesn't impact people equally. It impacts the youngest members of staff and the most precarious members of staff more. It also interestingly and horrifyingly impacts professional services staff, possibly more than it impacts academic staff. Why? Because as bad as the academic promotion scheme is, often at many universities, there is no pathway for promotion for professional services staff. So when you get to the ceiling of a particular grade, not only are you, you know, is your pay being cut in real terms year on year, because you've hit a ceiling, it's, you're not even getting an increment to make up for a tiny bit of that pay cut. So your pay starts to skyrocket, really is an, an odd word to use here, but skyrocket downwards at this point. Um, the other reason why getting more pay is important is because in some sense, it's a barometer for working conditions in the sector. You can kind of think of it as a canary in a coal mine because it's impossible to fix workload if you don't hire enough staff to do the work properly. That takes money. It takes increasing the amount of expenditure that's devoted to staff. You cannot fix casualization unless you stop using precarious contracts. That takes open-ended contracts, which takes money. And you fundamentally cannot fix any equalities pay gaps unless you address the underlying causes. Things like promotions inequalities, things like inequalities of um, caring and parental leave, um, on and on and on, representation, um, widening participation access for students directly ties into sort of gender, ethnicity, and um, disability pay gaps that we see as staff. All of these things require money to fix. So if, if UCA is not willing to increase our pay, or even just adjust our pay to keep up with inflation, it is a really clear barometer that they're not going to devote money to these other areas. Now, the other thing we're asking for has to do with these other three areas. And that is that we want them to be officially recognized as part of the negotiating framework at a UK-wide level. Um, I cannot possibly overstate how important this is. Um, being able to, <sighs> have baseline standards that we can point to as individual branches and say, this is a standard that has been agreed to, now we need to implement it locally and we're gonna negotiate over how to do that is incredibly useful. And as a really brief illustrative story, since 2018, my branch, the University of Sheffield has been pushing for workloads to be measured in hours and to be measured accurately. We finally, in February 2019, managed to get the academic workload working group started. And in um, late summer 2019, we submitted a 15 page report that would reform workload allocation at Sheffield in a really important way. This is a huge victory, but it's now 2021, and that report has yet to be implemented. Even in a branch that's strong with negotiation and that has managed to make a local so-called victory, we haven't been able to get this implemented because the university keeps throwing up delay after delay. Being able to point to a UK-wide 
framework that said you have to have a workload model measured in hours would give us a timeline and clout to implement this. Moreover, the university has blocked us from extending this work to professional services staff. Again, a framework would help us fight for that. So these are the two things we want. I cannot state enough how important they are. Please vote yes to strike and action short of a strike and please submit your ballots however you vote. Thanks so much, Robin. So what we're going to do now is take 10 minutes or up to 10 minutes for any questions that anyone has about the 